What's up guys, my name is Aaron, and today I'm going to be reviewing the demo album by Jay Paul. This is a leaked demo album that was leaked from Jay Paul's personal computer about three years ago. I know it's kind of weird to be reviewing like leaked tracks, but this is really like the only major amount of music that I've got from Jay Paul. Um, he's only released two songs officially, Jasmine and BTSU. So when I heard that this leaked three years ago, I was really excited to hear it. This kind of confirmed that he's one of the best singer, producer, songwriters out there right now. He just has such a unique like sound and stuff, especially with his brother. They're uh, the Paul brothers. They established just the Paul Institute that just came out a couple of months ago. Yeah, they just created such a unique, distinctive, and really catchy sound that I really like. I feel like the major thing with this project is definitely the sound. It's really distinctive and really almost primal with how sensual the album sounds. It immediately takes you to another place like a lost world or another planet or something like that. Jasmine has this kind of warp synth in that track with a kind of rhythmic hand claps, funky guitar and bass line, and the overall grand but personal feeling to that track. It kind of reminds me of something that would be played in Avatar the movie with how kind of a uh, jungle vibes that that song gives off. Shout Out Mumbai is just a really frenetic song with a strong Middle Eastern vibe to it. With the percussion and the woodwind instruments that play throughout it, that gives it kind of the Middle Eastern vibe. Um, I love the perpetual woozing, moving synth that plays in that track and the random vocal samples that are from like India. It really sounds like chaos, but it's kind of organized chaos and I like it. The song Crush, which is a cover of Jennifer Page's song that's from 1998. I love how sensual this song feels with the slithery guitar, the grooving bass line, the weird synths, and a really cool production. It sounds like a completely different song from the original. I don't feel like the original is a bad song. It's kind of, it's actually really good, but I feel like he just made it look like a completely different song. It doesn't even sound anything near the original. Um, the original is really just more like a 90s pop song, but I like how he took that song and just made it like completely another beast. All Night kind of reminds me of the movie Atlantis. It kind of gives me that underwater vibe. I love the scents that come at you like kind of waves of water. The percussion is really distinctive and kind of gives off that water vibe as well. I like this really simple guitar. Um, it really makes you feel like you're underwater or like at the beach or something like that. I love the production. It's really distinctive and it really puts you in another world. It reminds me of post-apocalyptic movies like Mad Max. I actually play this music when I'm playing that game. Like I really like listening to J. Paul and A.K. Paul's music while I'm playing Mad Max the game. The singing is just really emotive, really sensual, and it's almost Prince-like R.I.P. Jasmine, he sounds so pleading and so kind of pathetic as he's singing about this girl that's kind of rejecting him. Zion Wolf, he sounds really kind of playful and kind of mischievous as it kind of fits the kind of subject matter that's on that track. On BTSU, I love how brash he sings on that track, and like he sounds like he's really in charge on that track and really fits with what he's singing about. He barely sings like above a whispery breath, but I do like his voice. It's really sensual. You get what type of emotion he's trying to set across whenever he sings. He's really good at setting a mood like that. And I feel like the lyrics and the meaning in this album are really good too. It's not just a pretty sounding album. It really has some meaning to it as well. The song Jasmine is about this girl that wants to be in a relationship with her, but, but she doesn't want to do anything serious. Like she doesn't want to open up to him because she feels like he's kind of just a boy. Like he really can't provide for her and stuff like that. And he's just like pleading just to want to be with her and she just rejects him and stuff. Like his voice just sells the emotion behind that track for sure. The song Zion Wolf. I feel like this song kind of works on two levels. It's kind of about trying to make this girl trying to fall in love with him at one point. But on another level it's about getting the mass music audience to kind of listen to his music and stuff because he's kind of distinctive and kind of different than the norm and stuff. Straight out of Mumbai. It's kind of about his crush on this girl. He's scared to put his heart on the line but she's just kind of playing with him. She doesn't really want him at all. I love that it's not just like a pretty sounding album. It actually has some meaning to it. And I also feel like the samples are really cool too. This thing is so scatterbrained in a good way with how it kind of takes different things from different genres and stuff. It kind of reminds me of music from the Avalanches and Jay Dilla. It has some Indian samples that are scattered around this album as well. It has a Gossip Girl sample, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, really weird, I guess, in the context of this album. I like that show, but I really like the first few seasons of it. I would recommend those if you're going to check those out. Um, it has two different Harry Potter samples in that as well. Um, I can tell that he's a really big Harry Potter fan because he has a Harry Potter shirt in the promo for his label. He feels like a guy that's on Tumblr that's kind of showing off his favorite things, and I like that vibe that he sets off. The only thing that kind of disappointed me with this song, Good Time, it gets me wrong, that song just sounds amazing. I love the kind of burst of guitar on that track, the funky bass, the frenetic synth that's on that, and the jittery drums, and I like how his hook really sounds really catchy over the production, but that song is like 30 seconds long, and it doesn't really 
do anything. It's kind of like a teaser to her song, so I don't know when this dude's going to make music again, so this might be, you know, the most I get from him for this song, and that's kind of disappointing. But overall, I, like, love this a lot. I feel like this is one of my favorite albums, not just of 2013, but I think of my life. The production is really distinctive, really epic and sensual, and I like how catchy it is. It kind of reminds me of a post-apocalyptic 80s movie like Blade Runner or Mad Max. The singing is really emotive as well, and he sells whatever emotion that he's trying to set off in the singing. There's some real meaning in this album as well. It's not just like a surface level pretty album. I like how he kind of goes into depth about his feelings and stuff. I love the sample use as well. He's kind of just scatterbrained, and I like how he takes different things from different genres and stuff. I would recommend this to anyone. If you've heard the song Jasmine, which is on the Grand Theft Auto V soundtrack, or the song BTS Do and you like those, I would definitely give this a try because this is definitely a really good album. I can't recommend this any higher. This is really great. So have you either heard the album? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments what you thought, and thanks for watching. Thanks guys. Bye.